The corn bear is out and the sob is back in. I took Friday off this week so my dad and I can go up to the Central UP rally and volunteer for that rally. Uh, we're going to take a sauna and it's going to be fun but it's a six hour drive and I got a lot of stuff to fix on this thing beforehand. So my dad's going to do half the things on the list, I'm going to do the other half. Let's hang out in the garage and get some stuff done. Welcome to Duluth Junction Workshop, I'm Tyler. I think the last time we saw this car in a video we were going up to the Osseo show uh, in Remark. And I had a little bit of an issue up there. The condenser wire here turned out to be defective. Uh, there was an internal short in it. So I ended up plugging the condenser itself uh, directly into the coil, drove all the way home. And when I got home, I decided to do a tune up. And unfortunately, since then, it's been a game of musical points and condensers to get this thing to run right. I finally put in the set of NTK points that I had on at Intermark and I put on a Napa Eklund um, condenser from a Ford Pinto and that bolts that uh, bolts right up it plugs in and it's it's good it's the way I want it so I drove to work and drove perfectly all the way to work uh, just the thing rips and I, I parked it there I came out after work and went to do the errands and the thing uh, still runs smoothly but it has a lack of power so I figured that uh, without touching anything here, it's got to be some electrical thing. I've been messing around with different points of condensers and it seems like there's some kind of short somewhere in the system. And I do, I do enjoy having points of condenser. I, you know, I, I know there are a lot of people who are really fed up with points. I just, um, it's a very mechanical system. I think it's really cool. I think it's a, a novel thing to have in a car uh, in, this, in this day when everything's a computer. So I want to make it work right. So I figured I'd roll this thing over, check the points gap again, and then check for intermittent connections or bad connections around here. So here we go. Here's our points, our condenser. Uh, here's a little grounding wire, I think. And this looks like, it looks fine to me. And when I got the distributor rebuilt uh, professionally, they didn't touch that. So I think as long as it's still there, it's fine. There's no insulation on it. I got this uh, 16 thou. I mean, it feels perfect to me. Still has that slight drag. Perfect connection. If I move it around, it gets even better connection. <laughs> better than perfect. Perfect. Oh, there we go. If I rub it a little bit, it's perfect. That's fine. Maybe I'm missing something. So let me know if you have an idea <clears throat> what's going on with this car. <sighs> it just, it seems like everything's fine. And every, that, every time I test things, they're fine. I guess we'll move on. Dad's out here and the first order of business is? Putting a sleeve in the uh, pop-up headlight bracket. Sleeve that we forgot to put in last time? Right down in here. Yep, that's it's a good place the most to convenient work. to get at. And it's got some tiny like 5 16 hex on the bolt, right? Well, it's got a 3 on one side on the nut and 5 8 and 5 16 on the bolt. Yeah, and this, the Sonnet has this weird headlight linkage where uh, if you don't get everything just right and you don't tighten down the right bolt the headlights will kind of come up but not fully so your your uh, low beams will be kind of down here and your high beams too then if you get it right well, this kind of comes up this bracket looks like it should slide the one with the T hole in there yeah but that has to be tight to, for it to work and it was loose so so stuff that we didn't need for the Osseo show, so we didn't do because <laughs> we were on uh, quite a time crunch there. One of the things I didn't mention yet is after I did the grease fitting on the transmission linkage, the shifter works fantastically. I mean, it is easy as hell, it works great. And then actually, since it's so, so much less effort, I don't even need the shifter lockout anymore because I go from third to second, I hit that hard wall, 
without having to grab so far. So the harder you pull on that, of course, the harder you're going to accidentally go into something else, uh, like reverse. Reverse and second are, you know, this far away. So yeah, that shifter thing, if you have an issue with your sonnet shifter, that is, that is amazing. I've heard people have issues with bleeding the clutch as well. So if you bleed the clutch right and you do that um, grease fitting, you should have no issues whatsoever. One thing I do have a lot of trouble with is the exhaust. So I welded this thing up and unfortunately I had my angles wrong so I welded the muffler on at an angle. The angle is bad enough that the muffler will rattle against the trunk floor. It actually touches the trunk floor right now. It'll rattle if I uh, let the clutch out wrong. So I gotta pull the whole exhaust off, cut it off, put a V-band in and be able to adjust that angle next time. I also got a different hanger set up. If I feel frisky, I might put that on, but maybe not. We'll see. I did already put a V-band on the passenger side. It didn't really do what I wanted it to, so I think I need to add another V-band on the driver's side. Aha. Uh -huh. There's a ticking noise, I bet. This is a hell of a lot easier than it was before, but it still wasn't very fun. Another thing that Dad's working on here is sealing up the back from dust, and that he's got a light underneath the car. This is all a huge hole in there, where the, uh, there's a, a rubber seal that goes between the metal chassis and the fiberglass body, and that is detached from the body over here. That's a hole there. There's another hole on the other side of the same bumper mount. There is the hole. There's another one um, underneath the tail light on the passenger side. And then I think the diagonal section is good over here, but we have a giant hole. No wonder this whole thing's dusty. We get problems with the V-band installation. I'm using the same procedure I used in the dedicated V-band video a couple of videos back. We're dealing with some ridiculous exhaust stuff where they made one pipe to fit, the next pipe to fit, the next pipe and nothing is a standard size. Either I have to grind out 20 thou on the inside of this one, or I need to shove this one all the way past the flange and into the actual um, inner bore itself. I don't feel comfortable with that. I reached out to my machine shop guy and he does not have a lathe. I'm not going to buy a lathe. And so I got this little carbide deburring tool I'm gonna throw in the drill press. See if I can open this uh, V-band up appropriately to, to fit my exhaust. Well, I think that's pretty close. Real hot glue gun hours, who's up? You are? <laughs> All right, we got this thing tacked on. Um, went pretty well. Uh, it wasn't quite as square as I thought it was gonna be, so I wanna make sure just, um, you know, eyeball this thing pretty good. It's it's pretty close. I think it'll be okay for the tolerances we're dealing with here. I think I got enough tacks to hold it in place for now, and we'll see how it uh, fits in. We got the heater hose looped now. This one used to go up to here, and this one used to loop around to here. So that's just a straight thing. Then I got these little 5 8 coolant hose caps to put over there and that should uh, keep that sealed off. I'm probably gonna blow that with air to make sure I don't have any residual water in the heater core all summer. Uh, but I think that's ready to go. I drained as much water as I could out. Just had tap water in for the show. So dad's over here working in a crack behind, between the car and that door. He's throwing some windshield wiper tubing with a slit down the middle around the bumper mounts. Well, he does that. I'm gonna continue on the exhaust up here. Trying my best from here, but it looks like the the V-band doesn't want to line up correctly where it's supposed to in the passenger wheel well. But on the driver's side, it's completely hooked up and tightened down. This thing is still physically painful to work on to get it out of the car. Uh, you have to get your hands in really bad places. Um, you still have to jack the car up, but I, it's a lot better than before, I think. So. I couldn't quite get this one lined up exactly where I want it, but I'm satisfied enough that 
I think this is in the right place and I'm going to go and finish weld that. One thing that I'm thinking of in the future is, you know, a lot of V-band applications in muscle cars, I think you have headers that dump out at a really convenient angle going backward and that's where the V-bands are. Um, since this one has the headers come off at such a weird angle on the heads, um, I think it makes sense to have this one here and then have another one over here. And that way, uh, when I'm aligning the passenger side one, it would be a lot easier to move around maybe like a three foot pipe instead of moving around the whole, you know, 10 foot piece of piece of tubing. So some for the future. I don't have time right now, unfortunately, but uh, we're going with the theme of incremental improvements on this car. I had my dad help me. We mounted the muffler up there and then held it up and I made a dash with a paint pen. So I'm going to weld that on with the correct angle and that should go on to the point that it uh, lines up well enough. Of course, my standards for this exhaust are, uh, will someone stop me at a car show and ask why my exhaust is so messed up? <laughs> if I can uh, surpass that uh, hurdle and, and not have people ask me questions about it, then I think I'll be good. On the second try with uh, holding this on, I was able to get it pretty well lined up. So let's, uh, let's throw this back on. I think it's at the right angle. I almost welded this on with the tailpipes upside down. So let's not do that. And hopefully I'll be able to get this thing done before bedtime and uh, not make any mistakes. I think it's done. Some of my welds actually look pretty decent there. Pretty happy with that one. Let's see if I can turn this around on. This V-band, I did manage to blow one hole, but overall I think it looks pretty decent. I am still learning how to weld, and I think I'm making progress. Down here I did manage to uh, get it close enough that I was able to turn the wire speed and power all the way down. And I was able to do this whole thing uh, with, a, with a bead. I'm tired and pissed off. It's 10.30, oh my god, it's 10.30. I got that V-band in. I actually managed to get the whole front of the exhaust on. The V-band is on there. I think I over torqued it because when I went to loosen it and turn it a little bit, um, the nut feels like it doesn't want to turn. Got the other V-band matched up too, so they're both on. Hey, it's on. So one person job, it's on. So I have used this trunk for taking uh, powder coating stuff in and a bunch of weight in it. So it didn't quite hold up to that. What do you got going on here? I just cut a piece of half inch plywood. Nice. So I'll just drop her in and see if she fits. It's probably about twice as thick as the old one. Yep. All right, that should hold all the gear we can pack in this little thing. You could uh, that'd hold a couple of dead bodies. When I realized I messed up the V-band, I kind of panicked because Summit doesn't even carry one and three quarters inch V-bands. But I uh, looked through my system and I'm very <laughs> happy I work at Napa because I was able to find this number and it is a V-band of a different type. It's just kind of two clampy things and it's not as fancy, but I think it'll get me, get me rolling here. Also, because I've been experimenting with parts, I decided to go get Volvo 140 points and condenser. Uh, I, I know the condenser will fit. I'm not sure if the points will, but uh, we'll find out. We got the V-bands on. I think it fits, and we tightened up the headers. So I put some uh, coolant in. We tried to blow out the, the heater core to get all the residual water out, and then put as much coolant in as, as it'll take right now. So we're gonna lift the car up. We gotta go up and get the, the ramps on this thing, but we have the Corvair bumper here. Look at how much wider the Corvair bumper is. So if I put it off to the edge of the nose, this is how, how much wider the nose on the Corvair is than the Sonnet. <laughs> Hilarious. So we're gonna lift this thing up and we will uh, patch up the rocker holes tomorrow that we saw in a, a previous video. All right, it's Friday for me, but it's Thursday for everyone else. We're leaving tomorrow for the rally and that things are buttoning up pretty well on the sonnet so far. We got the exhaust on, we got a um, better vacuum tube on for the distributor advance, so hopefully, hopefully that wasn't an issue, but maybe it was. 
And we got the car on stands. We went over some of these issues before the winter rallies, and I know there are some rust problems under here, but uh, not a lot of them are too bad. We have a hole here, and that's just maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches. This is coming up a little bit, the seam, and then, yeah, otherwise the rocker looks pretty decent on this side. We do have a small hole under the jack point, but I can't, um, I can't repair that without pulling the rocker off. What I'm really concerned about is this split, and it goes from about here all the way to about there, and that's a couple, two or three feet of um, seam that's actually opened up there. I uncovered a little bit more than I expected down here. Now I do see a lot of the, what looks like original or very old seam sealer here, this uh, white stuff in here. And I got that out of the crack here for about half the rocker. And then I started prying out seam sealer down here, out by the suspension, um, what do you call this? Suspension link. And this whole rocker is, unattached all the way back to essentially the wheel well so a little bit more work than I anticipated and it's kind of scary because there was a piece there's a piece welded here and the front end is welded and there's a attachment here but most of the rocker has been completely unattached for this car I mean I I drove two TSD rallies on gravel with that happening I, I think this is the original rocker but this is kind of weird. So I noticed also that there are spot welds. So you can see about every inch or so there are spot welds. And that seems to be how they attach this thing. At the end of the day though, I think that I needed the experience of doing the trunk floor and the Pour 15 on that and welding. And also the Pour 15 on the uh, engine bay. And that helps me gain the confidence to do this rocker panel repair. Because this is a pretty scary thing if you're kind of not sure what you're doing. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump into it here. Boy, oh boy, do we have some surprises here. So I got all this cleaned up and it appears the entire front end is also unattached, which is a bummer. So I cleaned it up to about there and that's pretty close to the wheel. Went all the way back and what I did was actually took some fluid film and sprayed that inside the hole for a little bit of uh, any rust protection I can get, what I can get in there. I don't have any cavity wax and I'm not gonna worry about it. Then I got in there with a wire wheel, on a drill, and then my little surface conditioning uh, flappy disc here. And tried to get as far in as I could to get some of that rust out. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect. This is just something to get this thing more structural and get it in a better place for the future. So uh, sometime in the, in the distant future, I might have to pull this rocker off for now, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to tack it back up. We're going to seam seal it, and we're going to keep the moisture from getting in anymore. So my process here has been, um, so this is the place that was welded from the factory. So I went halfway between that and the end, which is this seam. And I tacked these up. I'm going to have to redo these. But I tacked it up in the middle. Then I went in the middle of this section, tacked it up, worked my way out, and now it's... And the way I'm holding this together is I've got a screwdriver on a floor jack right next to where I'm trying to weld. And I tack that and then I move the screwdriver. And that helps put a lot of point pressure right where I want it and gets them nice and close. This place I, I tried a 2x4 and it didn't put enough pressure on the very point that I wanted. So now I know how to do that. I'm going to keep going on down the line. Uh, probably split it in half and do those, split it in half, do those. So I don't try to smush it out to one end. So I want to have it as, as even and uh, consistent as possible. Doing a one tack here, and then what I'm going to probably do is, once all the stuff is kind of tacked up, I'm going to come back and fill in between these. Maybe do a tack next to each tack and get a little bit uh, better hold on these. I'll go past that and hopefully get this whole thing welded on. Right, you know I like to be real with you, so I'm going to be honest, uh, some of these welds are okay, I think, and some of them are complete garbage. <clears throat> but that's why I did uh, three tacks, 
next to each other on every part that I welded. So uh, hopefully, you know, if, if one isn't good, maybe the other is. And at the end of the day, there were only uh, one, there's only one place that was welded before this. So it's better than it was. I think it'd be okay. And I put about twice as many welds in as the factory did. Now it's time for seam sealer. So I'll throw that on, let it sit for, I think it's half an hour to, to cure, and then we'll paint it, let it dry overnight. And uh, that'll, that'll be about it, I think. Wait, what time is it? Friday morning. Friday morning. It's 10.30. 10.30, we're not doing too bad. Um, I got this thing together, we put it all back in, and the honestly, I'm pretty pretty happy with the patch job on the rocker. I think it looks pretty good, and I was able to dab that uh, paint in so it, it took only one coat. Anyway, I think we're, we're about ready to pull out of here. We got about five and a half inches of clearance under the muffler in the back because the back is stuffed with uh, tents and stuff uh, for camping. So we're going to go out. We'll try to catch up back when we're out at the UP and give you a couple little shots of this thing uh, doing its thing out there. So a little after six o'clock in the morning on Saturday, just about no one else is awake at camp, but I want to give you the update that Saab, the Saab did make it uh, to Powers, Michigan. It took about seven hours, including stops, and no drama whatsoever. So I guess this stuff worked. Happy to have it here, and everyone else is happy to see one as well. <laughs> Thanks for watching and press on.